This is a normal red blood cell. And this one here is a sickle cell. Well, you can see the difference. The normal one is, well, pretty normal. But this one has a slightly banana-like shape, or perhaps the shape of a sickle. That's why scientists call them sickle cells. Genius, aren't they? It's like naming a square square. Anyway, don't let their quirky shape fool you. They pack quite a punch when it comes to causing trouble in the bloodstream. See, while the normal red blood cells glide smoothly through our veins, delivering oxygen like clockwork, these sickle cells, they're like the rebels causing traffic jams during rush hour. Understanding the difference between these two is just the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to delving into the world of sickle cell disease, let's dive deeper, shall we? Now, let's zoom in on why these funky-shaped cells are more than just a quirk of nature. You see, when these sickle cells get stuck in the narrow blood vessels, they can cause all sorts of mischief. Think of it like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It just doesn't work. Except in this case, it's more like trying to fit a banana-shaped peg into a round hole. Chaos, right? But where do these sickle cells come from in the first place? Well, it all goes back to our genes, the building blocks of our bodies. You see, sickle cell disease is inherited, meaning it's passed down from our parents. Somewhere along the genetic highway, a little hiccup occurs, causing a change in the gene responsible for making hemoglobin, the protein in our red blood cells that carries oxygen. It's like a tiny typo in a book. Instead of spelling normal, it spells sickle. And just like that, we've got ourselves a whole new chapter in the story of sickle cell disease. Before we delve into the complexities of sickle cell disease, let's first understand the normal physiology of red blood cells. In a healthy body, red blood cells, or erythrocytes, function as efficient carriers of oxygen. They are flexible, disc-shaped cells designed to smoothly navigate through blood vessels, ensuring oxygen delivery to all tissues. At the center of these red blood cells lies hemoglobin, a crucial protein responsible for binding and transporting oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin acts as a molecular shuttle, ferrying oxygen from the lungs to tissues throughout the body. With each hemoglobin molecule capable of carrying four oxygen molecules, the bloodstream efficiently transports oxygen to meet the body's demands. When the oxygen levels in the blood drop, or when sickle cells become dehydrated, they change shape. Normally, red blood cells are like flexible balloons, able to easily squeeze through blood vessels. However, in sickle cell disease, these cells turn stiff and sticky because of the funny shape of their hemoglobin. This change in shape causes sickle cells to stick together, forming clumps that clog up blood vessels. It's like when too many cars get stuck on a road blocking traffic. Similarly, in the bloodstream, these clumps of sickle-shaped cells disrupt the flow of blood, which means less oxygen gets to where it's needed in the body. As a result, tissues and organs don't get enough oxygen, which leads to all sorts of health problems. One big problem is something called vaso-occlusive crises. During these crises, clusters of sickle cells block blood flow to certain parts of the body, causing intense pain and tissue damage. Think of it like trying to open a door that's stuck shut. You push and push, but it just won't budge. Similarly, during a vaso-occlusive crisis, the body struggles to get blood past the blockage caused by sickle cells, which leads to severe pain and discomfort. In severe cases, vaso-occlusive crises can even trigger life-threatening events. For instance, blockages in the blood vessels of the brain can result in strokes, causing sudden and severe neurological deficits. Similarly, blockages in the blood vessels of the lungs can lead to a condition known as acute chest syndrome. This syndrome is characterized by inflammation and fluid buildup in the lungs, making it difficult to breathe. It's like trying to inflate a balloon that's been filled with water. The lungs can't expand properly, causing distress and potential danger. So it's not just about the pain, Vaso-occlusive crises can have far-reaching consequences, impacting the overall health and well-being of individuals with sickle cell disease. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the symptoms experienced by individuals with sickle cell disease. One of the most common symptoms is chronic pain, 
This pain can occur anywhere in the body, but is often felt in the bones, joints, and abdomen. It's like having a constant ache that just won't go away, making it difficult to carry out daily activities, affecting overall quality of life. Fatigue is another prevalent symptom. Imagine feeling exhausted all the time, no matter how much rest you get. It's like trying to run on empty your body just can't seem to muster up the energy needed to function properly. Furthermore, individuals with sickle cell disease are more susceptible to infections. This is because sickle cells can damage the spleen, an organ responsible for fighting off infections. Without a functioning spleen, the body's ability to ward off bacteria and viruses is compromised, leading to frequent bouts of illness. In children with sickle cell disease, delayed growth and development are common. It's like watching a plant struggle to grow in poor soil. Despite their best efforts, they just can't reach their full potential. Other symptoms may include jaundice, a condition characterized by yellowing of the skin and eyes, and priapism, a painful and prolonged erection in males. One of the primary goals of treatment is to relieve pain and prevent complications associated with vaso-occlusive crises. Pain management strategies may include over-the-counter or prescription medications, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or opioid analgesics, to help control pain during crises. Hydroxyurea therapy is another commonly used treatment for sickle cell disease. This medication works by increasing the production of fetal hemoglobin, a type of hemoglobin that can help prevent sickle cell formation and improve red blood cell function. By reducing the frequency and severity of vaso-occlusive crises, hydroxyurea therapy can improve the quality of life for individuals with sickle cell disease. In some cases, blood transfusions may be necessary to replace damaged red blood cells and improve oxygen delivery to tissues this can help prevent complications such as stroke and acute chest syndrome, particularly in individuals with severe or recurrent vaso-occlusive crises. For individuals with severe sickle cell disease who do not respond to other treatments, bone marrow transplantation may be considered. This procedure involves replacing the bone marrow, which produces red blood cells, with healthy donor marrow to correct the underlying genetic defect responsible for sickle cell disease. In addition to medical treatments, lifestyle modifications can also play a crucial role in managing sickle cell disease. This may include staying well hydrated, avoiding extreme temperatures, getting regular exercise, and following a healthy diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Wait, have you heard of bone marrow aspiration? It's not just any medical procedure. It's a game changer in the fight against sickle cell disease. In our next video, we're diving deep into the world of bone marrow aspiration. Thank you and keep learning. Until next time, goodbye.